this serves to respond to Mr. Ralph Ramkaran's contention that I, Aubrey Norton, somehow am against cash grants. Permit me to respond to him and to point out that I do not oppose cash grants. The essential thesis I postulated in my letter are that the cash grant is inadequate, that unfortunately it is not aimed at giving our children access to education, that there is need for a comprehensive program of incentives to increase the earning capacity of our people, as I warned that the PPP's aim is to dominate and control the electorate, and that the present cash grant is teemed with potential for corruption based on the kleptocratic nature of the PPP regime. Clearly, Mr. Ramkaran missed the point. If I said in my letter that the cash grant is inadequate to address the key objectives of ensuring children access to education, then it follows ipso facto that I'm saying there is need for our people to get more money. I don't see how that opposes cash grant. Nowhere in my letter did I oppose cash grants. The next point I made is that the present situation as it relates to internet access needs to be addressed if children are to access education in the era of COVID-19. I thought the conclusion to be drawn from that is that the government should invest in delivering internet access to all communities and that a 19,000 cash grant alone comes nowhere close to solving the problems in education in the era of COVID-19. I also bemoan the fact that the PPP is using the internet as a political tool aimed at controlling hinterland communities rather than using it to ensure hinterland communities can access education and training. I follow that up with the view that in the absence of proper structures and checks and balances, the cash grant program will be another scheme for PPP corruption. Let me remind Mr. Ramkaran, who I believe is a reasonable man, that like me, he had pointed out that the PPP is a kleptocracy. The lack of accountability and widespread corruption in the 2005 flood relief program and their lack of accountability and absence of checks and balances in the recent COVID-19 relief distribution confirm that the leopard hasn't changed its stripes. The PPP continues to be a corrupt party. It was PPP members and supporters that were distributing the relief and they were involved in ethnic and political discrimination. That is the fact. The whole program is aimed at enriching the PPP. I was pointing out rather that the program is aimed at enriching the PPP, the elite friends and families, and not to deal with the main issues involved. The foregoing was followed up with the view that the cash grant apart, there is need to develop programs that will generate independence and allow people to earn honestly. That cannot be construed as averaging the view that cash grants will lead to dependency I can't follow Mr. Ramkaran's logic, but I disagree with his erroneous conclusion that I was sprouting some right-wing theory of dependency syndrome. Never did. I was, of the, I was at the time exposing the fact that the PPP's politics is not to develop a citizenry that is earning honestly with the aim of making them independent. They want our people dependent on the PPP regime. Their programs are aimed at bribing people and controlling them so that they can get their vote. In other words, the PPP creates dependency so that they can dominate and control the electorate. Most, if not all, PPP policies and programs are discriminatory in nature. 
and are not aimed at empowering all Guyanese, regardless of race or political affiliation. The PPP has demonstrated that it has no interest in the people of Guyana. They show no interest in good governance. To be precise, it is a corrupt dictatorial regime based on long-time outdated totalitarianism, cum racism. That is the reality. 